Thanks for joining us for tonight's event. My name is Kevin. I'm one of the event hosts here at Powell's Books. Before we begin, I want to encourage you to check out our lineup of upcoming virtual events by visiting our website at powells.com. And if you don't already do so, please follow us on social medias, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, as well as our YouTube channel. Tonight, we're excited to welcome Nnedi Akorafor in conversation with Wanuri Kahio. Award-winning author Nnedi Akorafor is here to talk about Akata Woman, the electrifying third book in the series that started with Akata Witch, which was named one of Time Magazine's 100 Best Fantasy Books of All Time and also 100 Best YA Books of All Time. From the moment Sunny Nawazu discovered she had mystical energy flowing in her blood, she sought to understand and control her powers. Throughout her adventures in Akata Witch and Akata Warrior, she had to navigate the balance between nearly everything in her life, America and Nigeria, the normal world, and the one infused with juju, human and spirit, good daughter and powerful leopard person. Now in Akata Woman, those hard lessons and abilities are put to the test in a quest so dangerous and fantastical, it would be madness for her to go, but the world could be destroyed if she does not. With the help of her friends, Sunny embarks on a mission to find a precious object hidden deep in an otherworldly realm. Defeating the guardians of the prize will take more from Sunny than she has to give, and triumph will mean that she will be forever changed. Nettie is joining us tonight from Phoenix, Arizona. Okorfor will be joined in conversation by award-winning filmmaker Wanuri Kahio, co-founder of Acro Bubblegum, a website and collective that promotes fun and fierce representations of Africa through the works of storytellers, clothes makers, graphic designers, musicians, and more. She's joining us from Halifax, Nova Scotia. This evening's event also includes an audience Q&A. Please use your Q&A button that's at the bottom of your screen if you'd like to ask a question at any time. And if someone has typed a question that you'd like to know the answer to, you can even upvote that particular question by clicking the thumbs up button. Perhaps most importantly, please support us by purchasing a copy of her book here at powells.com. We'll be putting a link to those uh, to her book in the chat a couple of times this evening. Nnedi Winari, it's really great to see you tonight. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much for having us. It's such a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm super, super, super grateful to Power Books for um, hosting this event. It's a rare occasion that you get to speak to somebody whose work that you have followed, that you care about, and who you genuinely feel is one of the best person you, you know in your life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, really glad to be speaking to you. Um, and um, Nnedi, um, I have so many questions for you about Akata Woman, <clears throat> but I just want to start off with something super simple. Of the three books, which is your favorite cover? Oh, wow. That is a hard, okay, simple question. That is not a simple question. Um, <laughs> of the three books, so Akata Witch, Akata Warrior, and Akata Woman, which is my favorite cover. I think that, you know, I think that the books have, um, my cat is on his cat wheel right now, and this is when he's chosen to go on it. So if you can hear that, that's what that is. Uh, yeah, so, I think like the um, like the books, the the covers have have progressed as well. Like they they've they've gone from they've gone from um, you know like the, the first cover. The first cover was uh, okay. So first of all, these covers are done by Greg Ruth, so the illustrator Greg Ruth, and it was this cover that made me want him to do all of my covers. So he basically does almost all of the covers for my books. So that's why that the style is is. Um, the style is familiar. You know, if you look at most of my books now, that the style of the 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 um, characters on the covers are familiar. So so there's that. So the first the first cover that he drew was the was Akata Witch, the 
paperback version of a Kata witch. And so like, you know, so as I said, I think that the, they've gotten progressively better. Like each of the covers have gotten progressively more and more sunny. So yeah, definitely the third one, Akata Woman is easily my favorite. And one thing that like when, when Greg does these covers, because Greg is awesome and I, I call him a, a sorcerer in illustrating, that's, that's my cat, so let me just see him. Hi, 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 okay, go away. Okay, so um, I call him a sorcerer and like, when when we when a new book is when a new book comes a, comes along he doesn't just draw the character you know we have these back and forth conversations there's actually a lot where it's not just conversations but i send him pictures i send him ideas send him a lot of just a lot of everything and then we talk about the character who the character is and all of that and so that process has gotten more and more in depth as we as we've progressed so akata woman was a, there was a lot of conversation a lot of back and forth. That barrette that she's wearing has a lot of detail in it, and it has there's story in the in the the comb. It's a it's not a barrette. It's, it's a comb, and there's story in that as well. So I and I love the I love the um, so I love that. I also love the her hair, the detail of her hair. I remember we had a whole conversation about her hair, and like you know her hair line, like we just like all the details about it. So. Um, yeah, so to make a long, long uh, answer short, <laughs> definitely the third. I love the third. I love all of them because, like, um, Greg really was able to to capture a a, a Nigerian American Evo girl with albinism. Like, he was able to draw her. <laughs> That's super it specific. Was, yeah, very, very specific, and he he captured her like perfectly. I was just I'm floored. So yeah, the third one, the third. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> so um, uh, I'm just gonna get into it. So but yeah. why Sunny? Like, how did Sunny come to you? Um, how has she grown with you? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Sunny is, oh, there's so much, but like the way the, way the story started, um, there was, before I was even writing the story, there is like I, I was one of my mom's best friends was um, was visiting from Nigeria, and and she was and she came with her nine year old daughter, and her nine year old daughter was like she did not want to hang out with her mom. She wanted to hang out with me, and so I ended up having this nine year old who just was who stuck to my leg for two weeks, and she was cool. She was cool, and I, you know I learned a lot about her. her name her name was Sandra and um and so she's a, she's Igbo and she also had albinism as well and so like after that two weeks of hanging out with her like this the story of Akata which had been just kind of swirling you know, yeah swirling and swimming around me I knew I wanted to write it I knew I knew it but the moment I met her I knew who my main character was it was like that. And so like there are aspects, especially in the first, the first book um, where I was taking from what things that Sandra had told me about. Like in the first book, the first book starts off with, the, I think it's chapter one, it's called The Candle. And it's all about Sunny and um, how she loves candles and she's gazing into these candles and they were better than TV for her. And one day, you know, she's got this big, you know, big hair and she'd taken, she, she, you know, had it combed out, she had picked it out, and it was just out. And she was gazing into a candle that that night, the way she always does, and her hair catches fire. Like she sees something in the candle, and she's getting closer and closer and closer, and then her hair catches fire. And then the next, you know, th th you know, she had to trim her beautiful afro. So like that, that story was Sandra's story. She told me about that. She told me yeah. she loved candles. And she loved gazing into candles. They were, it was like watching TV, you know? And she would talk about how she always had candles on hand and because, you know, the light was, the lights in Nigeria were always going on and off. And so you always had candles on hand. And, and so that happened where she, one day she was too close and it, it, her hair caught fire, you know? And, and then there's another detail in it where, um, where Sunny is known for sneaking up on her, her dad, sneaking and sneaking. Yeah, Sandra did that. And she did it to me multiple times. She was very quiet. And I just turn around, and she'd be right there grinning, 
you know? <laughs> so, so yeah, it's like a, a lot of these things about Sandra just went right into her character. So by the time that two weeks was up, I knew I wanted to, I knew she was my main character and I'm, I was going to draw from her. And she also talked about, about fights and, and also how she was treated um, in Nigeria because of her albinism and the names that they called her like Clorox, that was a name that they called like, so there was so much that I was, that I took from, from her and that I put into, into the main character. So it's like, it wasn't that I was thinking about, oh, I want to complicate this character as much as possible culturally. And, and let me give her albinism. It wasn't like that at all. It was liter literally the character that um, I based Sonny on had albinism. So I wrote that into the, into the narrative. So that was where, that was where it started. And since then I've gotten to know Sunny as a character more and more with with each with each book and so who is she becoming to you like she you know what I mean like what's her journey who who's yeah yeah she's becoming it's it's in a lot of ways it reminds me of Binti where Binti becomes more and more as she kind of moved down her path her journey so mm -hmm. like with Sunny it starts off very simple. Like the story starts off, you know, fairly simple. She's in this, this mystical society and she's learning and all that, but then it becomes more. She's just growing and growing and becoming more and more um, complex, yes, but also strong, but mm -hmm. not in a way like, well, yeah, in a literal way, because, you know, <laughs> we learn in, in book two that she has that literally, physically, she's going to be, She's of this bloodline, this warrior bloodline, and they get muscle. Like they're they they get this they develop physical muscle, the men and the women. So she's developing that. So physically, she's getting really really strong. Strangely so, but like also emotionally as a person, and, and a lot of it has to do with the things that she goes through and the things that she learns about herself. And then there's a you know she has to deal with the break with her spirit face. Um, which is really like her chi, her chi, it's like your, your personal spirit. Um, and she has to deal with that and what that means. And there's so much significance behind that. And there's so, and just to go on and just to, just to keep being yourself, it takes so much strength to, to, um, to be that. And she's just getting stronger and stronger and becoming more and more. She's, she's becoming really powerful you know, it, but not in the traditional way. When you say powerful, it's like, it's not, it's not in that way. She's just, it's, it's the, 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 um, the, the things that she deals with and that she overcomes and that she embraces are making her that much more powerful. So she's like with each book, she becomes so much more, like more intriguing to me. And it's like, it, it's like, um, I almost don't have to write it. It almost writes itself. Mm -hmm. Like, just you, you, you can just see it. It was, and it, and I really learned that with this, with Akata woman. You know, mm -hmm. it, a lot of this just came through, in in writing that. It was just so wonderful to see her, her grow and just become and become and become. Mm -hmm. And right now, as a as she is, as she becomes Akata woman, what is what about her is surprising you? What is it that you're just like, oh shit, I never expected that. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I, the, yeah, there's like there's something there's something in book three that surprised me. I will say right. that. Okay. I can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't yeah. say yeah. what it is. get into it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that's a, and that thing when you get to it when you're reading it, it's like I didn't even know that until I was writing and I was like, oh. And then like, what does this mean? And then I'm like looking back at all of the 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 previous stories and like, what was, what does this mean? And this explains so much. It was, it was like that. And it I love when that happens in stories where it surprises you even as you're writing it. That's just the best. It's just, it's just like the characters take over and you have no control over it. Yes, it's the best. <laughs> okay. So what about this world that you started to create? Like where did it come from? Like, what were you drawing from? What experiences do you, do you remember that kind of like uh, really linked to the spaces that you created? Yeah, yeah. So the world of um, like well, the leopard society and all the, yeah. the mystical stuff and all of that, 
all of that. First of all, the Leopard Society is real. So there's that. Yeah. <laughs> Instability is real. So there's that. Like yeah. there's so many things that I didn't make up in, in the series that is, um, you know, that that's just, there. And, and they're, these are things that I've like literally come across. And, and, and I love that. So, so there's like already a foundation to begin with. And then like, and then the masquerades, those are real as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm taking from that foundation. So I already knew that, but where does it really come from? It comes from, um, the only way I can describe it is it comes from those trips to Nigeria that I took, you know, especially, and they were all with my, especially my, um, my sisters, you know, they were with my sisters, my brother, he was seven years younger than me. So he didn't deal with a lot of the things that we dealt with in our younger years. So whenever we would go, you know, we would go to the village and, and just experience and take things in and listen and learn things in backwards ways where like, you know, you learn something that like, you don't learn it you learn of its existence, but you don't know what the hell it is, <laughs> that kind of thing. So there's a lot of that. So like what? Like, what? like, like masquerades, for example. <laughs> we didn't know what masquerades were. We just knew they were chasing us down the dirt road and we were terrified, but like intrigued at the same time. And they looked like monsters and they were always out and they always seemed to target my sisters and I. And we were lucky that we were fast. And then whenever we'd get to the village, we would hear their music and we'd be like, oh, oh, and no one else was like that. It was just, we didn't know what they, like, I didn't know the, no one explained the tradition at all to us. So it was just, it was completely out of context. And I think that helped in writing this. Like I learned about that in completely out of context. So like just by experiencing it. So therefore when, I, when I'm writing this narrative, that's set in this world, masquerades are, they take on a life. They take on a life, they take on a significance and a, a, they take up a lot of space in the story because that's how I learned about them, you know? And like, and also like, because we learned about them that way, we were obsessed with masquerades. Like <laughs> we would come back to the United States and we just talk about the masquerade. Remember when that masquerade got us into this corner and oh my God, remember what it looked like and oh, what's gonna happen if we, when we go back? You know, we talk over and over again about the masquerades. So that, you know, that kind of thing. So there were all kinds of things like that whenever we would go, it was just, we were just so, we were engaged with it. Like when we would, we would eat the food and eat something that was really disgusting and just and we'd <laughs> talk about it. And we'd be like, and then we'd take it, we, and we didn't know what it was. And we just, we oh man, remember how that tasted? I don't even know what that, or something that was really delicious. We're like, I don't know what fruit this was. <laughs> and it looked really weird, but it was delicious. And we just ate so much of it and remember what it caused, you know? You know so that kind of thing, you know, it's that, that, that kind of, um, that's what I always bring up the Nigerian American thing, because like you go, you visit as Nigerian American. So these things are completely unfamiliar to you. But if you're of the, if you're of the ilk that is interested, you're interested yeah. and open, you're not just there who's like, ew, this is dirty or ew, I'm just gonna stay in the hotel room all through, like that. We were very open to the experience. We were just like in the dirt with our, with our cousins running wild and just- how, Like how old is about this time? We, it, well, we started going, I was about seven right. the first time we went. And then it was just all, through, so it was like, and it was different experiences. So when you were a teen, yeah. it was a different type of experience too, and a different type of interaction, but we always got into stuff, always. <laughs> always got into stuff and we're always like present. Like we would know when the meetings were happening, you know, the, the, there would always be like these village meetings whenever we would come, you know, that would include my dad and my mom. And we were always sneaking to listen. You know, we, we didn't stay away. We'd sneak to listen. Cause there was always drama. There's always drama right, right. and gossip. And it was just, and we loved that, you know, we were engaged with it. We were interested. So when I sat down to write this thing, all this came forth. Right. All of it went right, right into the story, the, the, the strange mythology. And then there are the things that you'd see, yeah. you know, because we were always out and I, you know, I love nature and all of that. 
So I was always out and catching bugs. So I know all the bugs. I know how they behave, the weird ones. There was a grasshopper that I caught once that, I, oh, it's beautiful. I think it might've been a painted grasshopper because it was like, it was huge and it was, um, it was black, white, red, black, white, and red speckles, the whole thing the whole thing. And for me, like people probably see those there all the time, but for me, I caught it and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh my God, are you so, this was before cell phones and stuff. If I had a cell phone, I'd have a thousand pictures of it from every angle and video as well. So it was like that, just experiencing it and interested. And then, so when I sat down to write this world, just the way that I saw it just came forth you know, and, and, and then there were things that I would see where like, they just were ripe for imagination. Like they were ripe for it. Like, like there was one, one time and I must've been in my teens where I was in the village and I saw this and I'm not even kidding because I, I, I had it verified some years later. I saw a pink baby chick. It was pink. pink baby pink. chick. Yes, it was bright pink. Chicken. Yes, chicken. Pink. You know, they're yellow. This one was yes, bright. This was yes. like fuchsia. It was bright pink. And I'm like, what? And then several years later, I saw a blue one. Shut and up. I'm not even kidding. And what I learned was that people were coloring them so they could uh... know what's there. So I'm thinking, so you see these things with no context. And you just see this pink chicken just run across into the bushes. <laughs> and you're like, okay so it's ripe for you know you see right that's perfect stuff for, like writing stories goodness so much but when I saw the blue one I was like oh thank you no, I, I, I was never making this up because we talked about that pink chicken for for like years <laughs> so it was great it was great so it was, it was good to like sitting down and writing this like the the world Sunny's world and like what she encounters when she becomes a leopard person it was, it was like all the material was already packed in my head. It was not hard. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, secret societies, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I'm really? so And it's usually and, like women who can't go, you know, women are the ones who aren't allowed in and that makes me more interested. Yeah. But you also, also confront them constantly. Like you set yeah. them up and you can, what's that about? <laughs> it's me being obnoxious. <laughs> it's me being obnoxious. It's like, so when I set, when I started writing this, these stories, especially the, the Incibiti script series, there is a freedom I found in it. Mm -hmm. There was a freedom, especially with a Kata witch. That was where I discovered the freedom because I'm like, oh, I can, I can write about all these things that are so taboo or that I'm not supposed to write about or that are secret and it's fiction. So I have like, I can do whatever I want here. Of course, it's with respect. It's always with respect and care. But mm -hmm. like, you know, when it comes to, for example, yeah, secret societies, um, I've always been interested in secret societies, always. They're secret. I mean, <laughs> that's that's why it's in that's the title. Yeah. You know? And, and on top of that, you can't I know people who are in the secret societies and you ask them how how can you, you know people who how would you know if a person's in a secret society? Because secret. they're like, you know, like people know. Like my dad was in a secret society. How how do you know a <laughs> you person? No. You know, everyone knows, but you're like. But you it's have, not secret if you know. It, it, that's the funny thing. It's like a secret society, but it's not a secret because everyone knows who's in it, but you can't speak about it. And if you ask, they won't tell you. They're like, oh, you can't know any of that. You can't know any of that. And I, and like, I wanted to know about the masquerade secret societies really badly. I wanted to know. I just wanted to know so badly. And I knew several uncles, my dad and people like, and nobody would tell, I had asked them, I'm like, can you just, I want to know, like, can you just, okay, you tell asked? me initiation. Of course I asked. <laughs> of course, of course. I knew I wasn't going to be successful, but I'm going to ask. Like there might be that one person who's willing to spill the beans. <laughs> I am yet to meet one. Nobody <laughs> will talk, nobody. And that makes me more interested. That makes me more interested. So I'm just, um, 
it just attracts me to it. And then the idea that when someone puts on the, the um, you know, the costume for the masquerade, that when they put it on, they change and become the, you know, they become that, that spirit or ancestor. And I just, um, I'm fascinated by that. I want to know like as much as like, I want to get as close to it as possible. And it's, it's, um, yeah, it's it's just a it's an obsession of mine. It, it it has been. And then there are these books that you'll find, like especially in academic um, academic journals, where you know you have anthropologists who've gone in and and spoken to these people, and and they've been told what happens in these secret societies. And I'm like, you know, you're getting lied to. So like <laughs> those become even better. Like like oh great, these are lies. So those lies are things that I can kind of do stuff with. It's just, yeah, it's, it fascinates me. It all fascinates me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also, I'm still super curious about these, uh, the way Sunny, like, she's just like, not only is she, I don't want to say angry, but sometimes she has, she has rage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But is, is willing to believe something, but also con confront that belief. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that's such an interesting, I'm just super interested by that. And, and, and just I, why you did that. <laughs> because it's like, I feel like, well, in, in one regard, I, don't, I feel like I don't read enough narratives where they confront, right. Where they confront these things um, right. willingly, you know, where they're like, I'm just, I, I want to go right in. I want to look right at it. I want to know. You know, I want to know where it, they're not being forced in some way or forced by the plot or their journey. Like, I, I, I wanted, to, I want to see more narratives where, you know, with gutsy characters who are like, right. let me just look at this. And so Sunny, and she's, I've, you know, I was very conscious of that in, in when I was kind of creating Sunny of like, I didn't want her to be timid about who she is. She's not timid about who she is. She and she's a lot of things. And mm -hmm. she and she, she's um, and I think a lot of this comes from from you know from me as well. But like she confronts a lot of things, a lot of the cultural issues mm -hmm. um, without without fear, you know, mm -hmm. and, and without a fear of being wrong as well. You know, understanding that there is no right or wrong, but like these things, these conversations and conflicts are um, better had when you actually have them, as opposed to like Sunny could have, I could have easily written Sunny um, where in the beginning she just didn't know who she was. And so she tries to be this and then she tries to be that. And then eventually she figures it out. I could have written that. You know, but I, I want to see, like, I'm not interested in that. I've seen that enough and I can't relate to it either because I've never tried to be any, I've never tried to be what I'm not just to satisfy other people. I just, I'd rather just be what I am and then deal with the consequences of that. And so, you know, I put that in, I put that in Sunny where she confronts, you know, and she, she deals with what she is and then she confronts the consequences of it. And, um, and the results have been really, really interesting to see. Mm -hmm. And um, like the other thing that you all, you work with, not only in this, uh, this series, but also in your books is just like the spirit world where yeah. it begins, where it ends. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's like, um, it's hard to write about. I find it hard to write about, like, I love being there, but I find it like, I'm really careful about, and you see this, you see it a lot in Akata woman. I will say that it's, it's, there's, yeah, she goes there. Um, and she, because of what she is, she can go there um, being who, who she is, but like the wilderness, you know, that's, that's what it's called. And like, it's, I call it that in, um, in who fears death as well. And then I believe in the shadow speaker that might I might have either used the term or the concept was in in the shadow speaker and that might have been the first time where I was playing with the idea. So it, it's shown up in multiple in multiple narratives that I've written. Um, but like I'm I'm careful about it. I'm careful about it. It's not like 
it's it's not like um it's how would i even it's it's actually hard to describe because it's mm -hmm. not another place per se it's like I, I wouldn't want it to be viewed as another place even though sometimes i have to write about it in that language with that language it's it's the the mystical and the mundane coexist so the wilderness is um the wilderness coexists with the with the mundane world the living world or but i don't even like saying living because that doesn't quite describe the difference but yeah um sunny is so what like with sunny I'm, I'm playing a lot with stereotypes as well i've done that before i did that with in Zara the Windseeker in a way that's hard to explain, it's just too much to explain, but um, I've, I'm playing with stereotypes. So there are all kinds of stereotypes of people with albinism. And one of them is that they live between worlds, they're ghosts, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna play with that. Because Sunny actually, at one point she actually talks about, she's like, oh, you always assume that the, the person with albinism is the, the magical, you know, the magical person who could just do all these things. It's such a stereotype. And we, we've seen that stereotype many times in different narratives. It's very mm -hmm. tired. But like, I also wanted to like face it as well. You know, like, I'm not gonna pretend like it doesn't exist. And then I was like, and then not just facing it, but just what if I incorporated some of the, the stereo, because there's always a, a hint of truth, a kernel of truth in stereotypes. So what if I kind of tweak that a little bit? So that's where this idea of Sunny having this, like her own personal skill is that she can glide into the wilderness and, and, and stay alive, you know? So she has that, that ability. So that's really where so where that comes from and and so she can touch that that she can touch the wilderness in a way that most people have to work really hard to do and that was weird to write about <laughs> so, mm. but I, I think that like I really leaned into it in Akata Woman without mm. giving too much away I, I leaned into that yeah yeah mm. and does it scare you when you start writing stuff like that a little bit yeah it makes me uncomfortable it makes me uncomfortable, and um, and I and I've I learned long ago that if something starts scaring me, scaring me or making me makes me uncomfortable, that I should write that. You know, um, it's one of the most difficult lessons that I know that I've learned as a writer because, like, you know, it's it's it makes you uncomfortable. I don't want to write that, but mm. but yeah, it does it does make me uncomfortable, um, but it also there's also something very exciting about it too um and risky and 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 deeply intriguing hmm. about it about having her like yeah yeah and do you think this is um is there more of the akata series do you think oh definitely like i don't know when i, I would write it i don't know uh like, I don't know anything. Like, I don't, like half of the time, I don't know. What, I, I'm, I'm a very chaotic writer. I'm just, I'm very disciplined, but I'm very chaotic. So, uh, okay. I don't know when things are gonna come, but they usually come sooner than I, sooner than later, you know? And it's, it's always steady. Like I can, res, I can rely on the unknown, if that really? makes sense. Like I can no. rely on it. Um, you can okay. rely on 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 them coming these people coming into your world like i can rely on finishing like i can rely on um like i know that i will write the next book but i don't know when but I, it doesn't bother me because i know i will i can rely on that i it's it's mm -hmm. uh like um I don't know how else to how else to describe it. It's it's a weird thing, but I've learned that I've learned not to worry about it because it's proven time and time again. Like a Kata woman, I remember there was a time where I was like, I have no idea when I'm gonna write this thing. I don't even know. It was just I, I don't even know. I'm but I know it's in the either, and then I wrote it. Mm. <laughs> so it's, it's like it, it's always it's always like that. So yeah, um, this isn't a it's not a trilogy. It's definitely not a trilogy. I, I can see where the next book would go. I just don't know when I'll write it. It could be tomorrow. <laughs> Who knows? It could be, it will be sooner 
rather than later, but um, I, I know that I can just relax and, and not worry about it. It will come when it wants to come. So do these secret societies kind of show up in other spaces or in other books for you? Um, and specifically the Leopard Society, that's one of the questions that we had. Does yeah. a Leopard Society show up or will it show up in other spaces? I'm trying to think. Um, I could see it showing up. I mean, there, it's like, it's not a direct thing, but I know like in Binti, the Night Masquerade, right? there was, you know, there's something there with that. Right. There's something there with that. Um, I'm trying to think about, and, and yeah, Zara the Wimsy. It's, it's progressive. Um, I could see, I could see it. I could, I could see that happening with other other works because I mean the leopard society is everywhere it's like it's not just Nigeria yeah. like right. they, they're that's a community that is all over the world in in with various with different ways of um conducting themselves so right. so yeah I could I could see that okay I could see that um so I, I'm just I just there's something I want to talk to you about semantics okay right? Yeah. Um, you often use the word African futurism. Yes. How, how, is, how is this an African futurism book? And, and, and how, I know you've defined it many times. Mm -hmm. I've seen you on your Twitters. Yes, I think I, I even did it today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, you want to talk about African futurism and how it relates to the Akata woman? Okay. Okay. So first, the Insubiti script series is not African futurism. It's African Jujuism. And yeah. the difference is, the and, and of course, okay, so like African futurism is basically, it's like a subcategory of science fiction. African Jujuism is a subcategory of fantasy. It's not that never shall the two meet. I've, I've, I've written several things that have both in it or whatever, but you know, those yeah. are just two separate things. So, yeah. um, so a Kata woman or, or the, the Incibiti script series would definitely be, I, I, you know, it would definitely be African, African Jujuism and like, okay. So the definition of African Jujuism pretty clear. That one's easy. Uh, so African Jujuism is a subcategory of fantasy that respectfully acknowledges the seamless blend of true existing African spiritualities and cosmologies with the imaginative. So that's what um, the Incibiti Scripts series does. And, and, like, um, and the reason why that word is really important to me, as opposed to just calling it fantasy, is because of a lot of things that I've already mentioned. Remember how I said that the Ekbe Society, for example, really exists. Masquerades really exist. Um, oh, I almost gave something away, so I'm glad I didn't say that. Yeah, things, <laughs> there are a lot of things that, re that are true, that are real, um, especially according to other people's worldviews. And then there are also the things that I, where I've tweaked it a little bit and, you know, it's, I, I've used the imaginative to either make them bigger or exaggerate them more or whatever. So like, and I, and I felt like with this, this series, I, I felt it really important that people understand that some of the things were, were not made up. Because at one point when, when I was doing, um, when I would, during Q and A's, people would always ask me about like, how do I make all these things up? And I'm like, I'm not, most of this stuff is not made up. And I think it's really important to understand that I'm not just making stuff up. That's a different type of storytelling. This is, this is a narrative rooted in specific existing traditions, you know, and that's to be read in a different way than something where everything is just made up and fun and whatever, you know, and whimsical and stuff. So, so yeah. Um, and then uh, African futurism has its own definition. It's, it's, uh, how would I, okay. It, it's, it's, uh, it's specifically, it's, it's specifically rooted. It's, um, it's specifically rooted in African culture and history and mythology, just like African Judaism, but it's like, it's, it's interested in technology 
leaves the earth, skews optimistic, is centered uh, predominantly around um, people of African descent, Black people. Um, it, it deals with the question of what if and what could, it, as opposed, like it's less concerned with what could have been and is most concerned with what is and can, and can slash will be. So that would be African futurism. So like what fits more under the umbrella of African futurism would be like my novel, Nor, um, mm -hmm. and I'm like blinking on all of my other books right now because I have some, but, but yeah, Nor and uh, the, the Book of Phoenix, um, Who Fears Death is a blend of both, blend of both. Um, Lagoon would be African futurism, yeah. So is any of it magic? If you, okay, so the line between technology and magic, if you go down the, at some point they meet, and I, this is something that I was realizing like, uh, like recently. Oh, something frees up, possibly. I think so. Heavy. Like there's, there's something, there's something, yeah, at some point they, um, oh, it says my internet is unstable, yeah. but it, it, it's, there's, at some point they, they touch and I need to like, I need to play around with that a little more before I can even say more about it. What do you mean at some point? At some point, sorry, because we lost you slightly. Oh, okay. Um, how do I even say what I said before? At some point, uh, like the mystical and juju, whatever you want to call it, the, those things, like those, those real um, unexplained things. And then technology is over here. It's, there's some point where they meet, where they touch, and you, that, they and, you, and you call that magic. I don't know what I call that. I don't know. That's what I'm like, and I'm, I'm and I think I was kind of playing with it in Nor. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I have to interrogate that a little more. That's something we should talk about. <laughs> <laughs> That's something we should talk about later. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, I have a, a, a somebody who's asking, how do you know when a book is done? That's a good question. Um, you just stop. No. <laughs> you, <laughs> uh, God. You just know, like, I think I've been doing this long enough where I know, you know, it's like you, you just know it in your gut. And it's, 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 it's usually long after you think it is. You think it's done, but no, it's not done. There's a lot more editing and polishing and maybe some big overhaul that you have to do, but it's, but at some point you just know. And, and no book is per, like, no book is perfect. I, I can't, I, I rarely go back and read my books because like within the first few lines, I'm, there are things that I would still change. Mm. I still edit, like always, so. But you, I don't know, it's almost an intuitive thing for me now, but this is after many years of experience where I just, uh, where I know, and it's also with uh, um, being honest with yourself and not being, you know, not being lazy, mm -hmm. you know, uh, where you just kind of know that, okay, it's, it's ready. It's a good feeling though, when you get there. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess that's how you know that this, this character is not done with you. Yeah. Have yeah. you had characters that have been done with you? Like who are just like, ah, I'm out. Yeah, I have. Like, I have. Um, I think that it's not only so. <laughs> I wish it were. I don't think she's done. I don't. And I just don't even want to think oh. about it. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Like, hmm. Like that's been like, nah, I don't want to talk about it. But that just blew my mind. <sighs> I know okay. Phoenix, Phoenix is done. Oh, Phoenix is done? Phoenix is done. Phoenix is done, yeah. She was mean. She like, you know, my character, ah, she, she was mean. Phoenix. Don't diss Phoenix. Phoenix I'm, just, I'm not, I'm not. I'm Phoenix just... is one of my favorite. <laughs> don't be dissing Phoenix. Phoenix did she what she needed to do. She, she did what she, yes. 
she wasn't mean she was like driven to sorry okay go on she would not let me sleep okay she was mean I would sleep and she'd be in my sleep saying get up I'm not done talking she was the only one of she my characters persistent. she's persistent that's mean if you don't let me take a nap after I've done like I've been writing for hours I try to take a nap and you ah, no that's mean <laughs> okay okay who else um Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. is going to come back and haunt you after you just said that. I know. <laughs> That's why it's like, this is probably, I don't even, oh, I, yeah, yeah. That was a bad idea to do that. But um, who else is done? I think that Iodele in, in Lagoon is done. Oh, okay. Okay. She's done. I think she's done. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, yeah, there, there, there are more. I just, um, but those are the ones that, yeah, I know Phoenix is, has done what she needed to do. Oh, somebody said, but uh, some of the other stories are set in the future created by Phoenix. True. That continue. True. Why are we doing this? <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I'm just reading. I'm Stop reading it. questions. I don't know why. I'm just like. I know. It's like people just keep. I, I'm I want to know as well, but I'm just. I'm, I'm just reading a question. I'm very suggestible. Like, like if somebody like pokes my my creative mind in the right way, it's just like it's like things start falling out, and then the next thing you know, there's stuff. Ah. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave that alone. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> um and i am super curious about um because this, this is not the only book you've re released recently which is extraordinary to me how you release books um, recently. i don't know yeah like spent. so so what else has uh come up for you um so nor came out in november and so that's like two books in two months and i don't know how that happened and yeah. like uh the only time that's like anything close for me has had I'm you know I'm prolific I like writing that's the thing I like writing so I'm always working on something and enjoying myself while doing it but and then I finish things and then I'm like how did I do but like um it was uh the book of phoenix and binti came out in the same yeah they did same year yeah but not yeah. that close together. It wasn't that close together. I mean, I'd have to look, but. Anyway, but um, this, this over the last, yeah. I mean, Nora has come out pretty recently. Yes. Nora was two months, it's two months. So it's like, I, I've never had this happen before and I don't recommend it. <laughs> it's, like, it's a lot. It's a lot because both of these books were heavy, but the thing is I wrote both of them. I wrote um, Akata Woman and Nor like, I, I finished both of them during lockdown, like both of them. And the, like the reason was like lockdown was just, I was locked down. <laughs> and I had like, I had been jumping around all over the world, you know, for years really. And then lockdown was the exact opposite of that phenomena for me. And like once that, like I couldn't go anywhere, I couldn't like literally couldn't go anywhere. And I just like everything spilled out of me. Like Nor was already pretty formed for me. It was already pretty formed, and I just needed to stop bouncing around. And then Akata Woman was—I didn't realize it was there, but it was there. I had just come back from Nigeria right before lockdown, and it was there. And so when I sat down to start writing Akata Woman, I didn't think it would just flow out that quickly and that complex. That narrative, like wow. Um, so I guess this is the result, like two books coming out in two months is, mm -hmm. is the result of that. So I guess that's not, um, really, uh, surprising, but it, it is, it's, it is overwhelming because <laughs> there's mm -hmm. two, both of the books are big in their worlds and there's, they're just a lot, both of them. Um, yeah, yeah. Here's another question. Which character have you created that is most like you? Most like me. You know, I know. I feel like, go ahead. I want to know what you think. Oh, I, you know what I think. <laughs> Binti? I think LaGuardia first. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 The main character in LaGuardia. Yeah. I mean, literally. Yeah. 
Main Literally. character in my graphic novel, LaGuardia. I mean, she 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 looks exactly like me. <laughs> looks exactly like me. Um, does brash things. Brings a plant. You know, smuggles a plant alien into the United States. Is that something you've done? <laughs> I would do that. No, I. Well, I kind. You know, <laughs> you know what? Maybe. I just realized, you just made me realize that I might have done something that inspired that, and I didn't even realize it. I'm not going to say what, but um, I did bring something. <laughs> I brought something from Jamaica once. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and it was alive. So um, smuggled it through in a jar. And yes, I did that. So, okay. Yes, I'm very much like uh, like future in LaGuardia. Yeah, yeah, you you are correct. You are correct. Okay, and but you also think you're like Binti. I yeah, I think that like there are aspects of me that Binti, like the way that she, um, there's uh, she's like um, she's very family oriented, and she had wants. <laughs> And th things that she wanted to do, she wanted to leave to go to, you know, to the finest university in the galaxy. And her family was, you know, made it very difficult, and and she had to defy that. Yes, I relate very well with that because I had to do that. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, I'd say Binti, def and then the way that she. It, she still embraces, you know, she embraces who she is and where she comes from and, and, and still goes out there and brings it with her. She doesn't feel the need to change who she is when she goes out into, into the world and meets all these wonderful and sometimes not so wonderful um, people and, and, and characters and all of that. She still is who she is. So yeah, that definitely, I, I, that, that similarity is definitely there, yeah. So um, I have a question here that says, are you ever sad when a story ends? Uh, like you weren't ready for it to be done even though the story was done. I've never been sad. I've always been happy. <laughs> <laughs> always been happy. It's always been like, yes. And there's always celebration and joy <laughs> and like uh, this, this amazing, cathartic, delicious feeling of accomplishment. It's almost addictive. <laughs> like fin finishing a story <sighs> is great. It's great. I don't know. I've never like had this any moment where I'm like, oh, you know, it might be because that word that story exists in my head. Oh, you know, it's always there. And yeah, um, no, I, I haven't uh, a feeling of, of sadness. No, like there's always just a sense of completion, and that it's like this, and it's like this. Um, it's like. This is a very bad, <laughs> whatever. But it, I hope you get the idea. You know when you 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 blow a bubble and you blow it, blow it, blow it, and then the bubble lets go, and then it's there. That's uh, the feeling that I get. Uh, <laughs> it, it exists. It's there, and and yeah, and it's not like it's like letting it. You're letting it go, and it's existing without you. So that's a great feeling. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Cool. Um, there's a question here. What gave you the idea for the wasp artist? Oh, the wasp artist. Yes, I love the wasp artist very much. Um, the wasp artist has grown a lot as I've written the wasp artist, but like, um, it started with. Uh, and this may seem completely unrelated, but I, that's how it started. And that's <laughs> it's just what it is. Um, so there. Okay. So there are two instances. The first one was, there was one time when we were, I was in Nigeria and um, we had this big bunch of plantain and there was this giant wasp that was just hovering around it. And I wanted to come in the kit to the kitchen and get something. And I just couldn't because this wasp was just there and it was scary. It was just terrifying. And um, so eventually I called my mom I'm like, mom, maybe the wasp there. It's a wasp. And my mom got irritated and just, smashed the thing with her bare hand against the wall, you know, and then just bleh, ran her <laughs> hand down the wall. You can hear the exoskeleton of the wasp crackling, I'm like, oh, oh, oh. you know, and, and then she let it, let her hand go. 
And when she let her hand go, the wasp dropped halfway and then caught itself and then continued hovering. <laughs> I was like, oh. I was like, oh my God, that's Nigeria. Everything in Nigeria is just like that. Strong. You know? it's just, it's strong. <laughs> Resilient. Strong. Yes. So that was the so that was that wasp. And then there was a wasp that I that I had seen that like um it was a it, it's kind of it also wound up in 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 lagoon as well. Like there's a Pepsis wasp that I was obsessed with. It's mm. a wasp that's um that fights. It's called a uh, tarantula hawk. It kills mm. tarantulas and they have them here in Phoenix, by the way. And I saw one that flew by and that was that meant a tarantula was nearby, which I didn't want to think about. But they kill tarantulas and they're huge. They're huge and they have the strongest sting in the world, like oh the most painful God. sting in the world, but they're beautiful. You know, they're beautiful. And so when I was writing, so th those two things are what inspire <laughs> the wasp artist. Um, like, I know what it looks, it looks like a Pepsis, it's Pepsis wasp, that's the tarantula hawk. So it looks like that, but it, and it has that sting that will paralyze you. And, and you'll have to watch it commit suicide. Oh my God. <laughs> but it's a wonderful artist. It's like it's just, yeah, the wasp artist is like one of my favorite characters in, in the series, but that was the origin of it. Like those two stories mm. kind of eventually, be, that's, that shows you how my mind works. Cause that's how I got the wasp artist from those two stories. Yeah. So um, I mentioned that my 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 godson is one of your favorite like <laughs> fans, right? Um, and he wanted to know if a kata series has a special place for you, out of out of all the books. Yeah, I mean, all all of my books have a special place for me. The Akata series is like I needed to write it. It's like it's it's a series yeah. that I needed to write. I needed to write. Like I can't imagine like all of my, my, the Nettie library without exactly. that. That is a necessity. Like I needed to write it. It's, you know, it has a, a Nigerian American main character who kind of navigates her Nigerian Americanness, you know, and then it has Sasha who's African American, but most worldly person you'll, you will meet. And uh, he grapples and, and he, he's very gutsy and he, know, he faces these issues as well. Mm -hmm. um, then you have Orlu and Chi-Chi, like both of them represent like something really important as well. Like, and, and then just that world, that world is, is like rep representative of the, just the Nigeria that I know. It's the Nigeria that I know that I've experienced, and and yeah, it, it's a necessity. Like it, it mm -hmm. need, I needed to to write this series. It's like a major part of um, what it is that I do and what it is that I that I that I represent. Hmm. Um, and uh, he also wanted to know what does the wasp do when it's away from Sunny. <laughs> That's a good question. The wasp, like, okay, so the wasp is an artist. So, of course, the wasp is, like, sometimes the wasp is sleeping, you know? <laughs> but, but a lot of times the wasp is out just experiencing the world, chewing on things, <laughs> chewing on things, and, you know, interacting with other wasps every so often, and sometimes just observing. It may sit at the top of a palm tree and just observe things for a long time. It's, it's an artist. It's a wasp, it's a wasp artist. artist. Yeah, it's a wasp artist. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, this might be the last question. How do you decide whether your stories are for younger or older audiences? How does your writing process change depending on the intended audience? Um, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and the process doesn't, it's the same. <laughs> and like, I don't write to any audience. You right. know, I don't write to any audience. I write what comes. I write the story that comes. Mm -hmm. uh, like, like if I were thinking, oh, I'm writing this for young adults. There were certain things that, like, I would have hesitated a little bit with, uh, even with, with Akato. Who, with, even with Who Fears Death. Oh, Who Fears Death. That one, like, yeah. That was definitely adult. Like there was nothing. And when people call who fears death, young adult, I right. get offended. 
I get offended mm-hmm. because I'm like, I would never write that for kids. Yeah. I would never write that for kids. Yeah. Um, but like the, there's certain stories that I write where it's like clear that that's, that's the intended audience. But when I'm writing it, I'm not thinking about that. I'm right. just like, I just let it go and then let it decide what it is as it goes. And, and that's always how it's been. Um, the, uh, the, <clears throat> the Insta Bitty script series may not always be a young adult, you know, <laughs> it may not always be that. And, and I definitely want the freedom to do whatever I want. Cause I always do whatever I want because I can't control what I, <laughs> I can't control what comes. And um, so I, I just wouldn't want anyone trying to make me do that. Cause I like, I don't even know how I, I would, I would do that, but like, it, w- one of the things I have a master's in journalism. And so like a lot of my writing style is journalistic comes from the simplicity and clarity of journalism, which means that like journalist, journal, journalistic writing is meant for the masses. So I naturally write like that. And so because I naturally write in that way, it, it's easier to flip back and forth. You know, if I'm writing for um, young adult, a young adult audience, I don't have to change the way that I write. Or if I'm writing for an adult audience, I don't change the way I write. The only difference I would say is if something is like, if it's a story that that is young adult, um, at some point, I will identify that at some point. Like this is right. like later, um, and, and once I'm at that point, I know I would, when it comes to darker things, like really darker, darker aspects, there's a responsibility that I feel when I'm, when I'm, when those parts are, it's not that I won't put them in the story I may have to explain. And there's certain things that I'd have to be a little more delicate about. Um, yeah. Whereas with an adult, narrative I'm not delicate at all I will just throw you in there and you have to deal with it like who fears death that's why I say I'm like you can't call that young adult I'm not there's nothing I there was I threw you in and the, there you know the two there are two parts that you know what I'm talking about where I threw you in and there was yeah. it was unapologetic it was unexplained it was not soft so no. yeah yeah that's no. different it was not. Um, okay, final, final. What is what are you so what are you most excited about working on right now? Oh boy. Um, mm-hmm. there's several things that I'm working on right now, like several things. And I'm I think the Binti adaptation, I'm really just awesome. You know, yeah, that that is uh yeah, we're ready. Yeah, <laughs> we're ready. We're um, ready. <laughs> I think that would be the one I'm most excited about. Um, there's also a script that I'm writing that I'm very excited about that I can't talk too much about. I think those two things are what I'm most. Uh, and then there's another. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then, there's thing, and then the other thing and then, yeah, then the other thing and then the other yeah there's some yeah there, i can't there are a lot of them okay i'm okay. excited I, I, we're gonna hang on to the binti adaptation um but thank you thank you thank you thank you for spending this time with us um thank you thank you thank you to powell i'll turn it over back to you thank you so much Wanari, for uh helping us with this event and having this conversation with nettie this is the book right here Caught a woman. Uh, I'm going to put the link to it in uh, chat right now. So go ahead and click on that and you can order it from us here. Uh, if you come into Powell's, you will uh, see a lot of Nettie's books on the shelves here, very popular here at Powell City of Books. Um, also in the chat right now, I'm going to post a link to our YouTube channel. Um, this event was recorded and will show up on our YouTube channel uh, probably sometime tomorrow. So if you have friends that uh, missed it and you want to share it with them, please do so. Um, check out the link there. You can see all the other events that we've done um, on our YouTube channel too. Lots, lots of great stuff to see. Um, once again, thank you so much, uh, Nettie and Winuri, and thanks everyone at home, and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.